All right, hello everybody, and welcome to the next edition of Tech Talks series, where we sit down with our valued partners and customers to learn more about their IoT deployments and goals. My name is Jack Stewart, and I am a business development director at TechTelic. And today I am very pleased to be joined by Gabriel Nave, Vice President of Business Development with EveryNet. Thank you very much for joining me today here, Gabe. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jack. I'm really excited to be here with you. EveryNet is an outstanding partner of TechTelic. They've been deploying TechTelic's portfolio of Kona LoRaWAN gateways as they roll out the world's largest low power wide area network. Uh, Gabe, could you maybe just you know, kindly introduce yourself and give uh, maybe a brief overview about EveryNet for, for, those of, for those viewers who may not be familiar? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, again, thanks for having me here today. I'm really excited about, about this and I'm excited for the partnership. TechTelic's been a great partner for us uh, over the past few years. And so uh, EveryNet uh, is a, as you mentioned, a global LoRaWAN network operator. Um, we operate in a number of countries throughout the world uh, and we build out national networks that we, we design, build, own, operate, manage uh, to allow for all kinds of use cases that we'll talk about in a few minutes, I think, uh, and um, uh, allow enterprises, public agencies, utilities, whoever to deploy LoRaWAN devices without having to deal with any of the infrastructure headaches. Um, that's, that's what EveryNet does. And, I joined EveryNet, started watching EveryNet a number of years ago and, uh, and had reached out ahead of time to say, if you ever want to come to the United States uh, as a company, I want to be a part of it because I was really excited about how EveryNet was, uh, was operating around the world. That's great. Yeah. I mean, I definitely share the same, share the same opinion that uh, TechTelic and EveryNet have really established a, a great partnership since we've been engaged over the past few years and we're doing some outstanding things together. Uh, we understand, Gabe, that uh, you considered several different IoT technologies when deciding to, you know, build out this this network across the United States, um, and you, of course, settled on on LoRaWAN as the technology of choice um, for for your network. Can you maybe provide a little bit of insight on on that decision? Wow, wow, that's a it's a it's a really good question because there's so many options in terms of how you would go about uh, supporting IoT uh, solutions. And you know, I I spent 20 years in cellular IoT and uh, and know those headaches all too well. Uh, and one of the things we saw over time versus cellular was the solutions that we deployed. We really needed GPR. We were really happy with GPRS uh, back in the day, and and how. Uh, 2G operated uh, and global on a global basis, but as that was going away and the, the pace of um, network uh, longevity was shortening uh, in the cellular world and the, the costs were going up. So uh, over time, um, shorter lifespans, longer costs, higher battery uh, draw, really the idea of doing something in the ISM bands, uh, unlicensed spectrum without the the constant need for more throughput and more devices that are being driven by uh, more capable handsets on the cellular side um, uh, became more and more attractive to me uh, as a, an IoT business uh, uh, guy. And of course, then um, there were a number of technologies that have come and gone or come through that space, but, but in particular, Looking at what was originally on ramp became Ingenue. Looking at uh, at Sigfox, um, it was really clear to me probably seven years ago that that LoRaWAN was the right technology because really because of the business model, the, the technology itself is fantastic, um, but for for sure the business model surrounding uh, LoRaWAN made it clear that that was the right technology to be a part of, uh, mostly because of what it meant to have an op an open ecosystem that multiple, multiple vendors uh, in a competitive environment providing gateways such as TechTelic, but also uh, a very robust ecosystem around devices and solutions uh, on top to feed it. That's great. You know, I mentioned earlier, and you guys certainly promote that you have the, the largest low power wide area network in the world. Can you maybe talk a little bit about that network and the, the infrastructure, but you know, more importantly, how easy it is for, for somebody who may be entering the ecosystem to get up and running on your network? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so we started in the United States, we started 
sort of putting together the, the business team here at the late 2020 and, and um, began deploying just a year ago, uh, gateways on towers. We build entirely on uh, cell tower infrastructure in the United States. Um, or maybe talk a little bit more about the gateways that are on those in a minute, but um, all, all hardened infrastructure. We monitor over 50 data points inside of each gateway every minute that goes feeds back to our global NOC outside of Milan, Italy. Um, so we're building a world-class carrier grade network, monitoring it, managing it as a uh, utility asset. Um, and we do it as shared infrastructure. And so architecturally slightly different from how everybody else deploys LoRaWAN in that we are separating the RAN layer from the, the network server layer, which means we can be agnostic to anyone uh, who has a network server, whether they want to enterprise deploy that or, or use a, a uh, another public network server uh, operator um, to be able to use, put their devices on our network. Um, <clears throat> Or for, for proof of concept testing, we do operate our own. So that's uh, own network server. So it makes it really easy. For somebody who wants to get up and running on our network, um, you know, we, we have a, a free trial that makes it really easy. I think their QR code may be on the screen that somebody can scan, fill out their information. We get them set up with, they can activate up to 30 devices for three months at no charge. That makes it really easy. Um, and then, you know, from, from there, if somebody wants to go into a commercial deployment, we have a, a number of, um, of uh, value-added resellers, MVNO type um, people who, uh, who are the ones who actually do the billing and, and manage the, uh, the end customer experiences. Um, so whether, depending on who somebody, where somebody fits in the ecosystem, we can get them to the right place to be able to get on the network in a commercial uh, manner. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, you mentioned it a little bit earlier, and as many of the viewers know, uh, Tectelic is really a market leader in the development of what we call and what you refer to as carrier-grade LoRaWAN hardware, um, including, of course, LoRaWAN gateways. And we have uh, you know valuable partners like Evernet who uh, a lot who work with us to roll out you know very high-value end-to-end carrier-grade solutions. Um, as mentioned, as you mentioned. Uh, Gabe, you're, you're deploying Kona Mega Gateways, Kona Macro Gateways, part of Tectelix carrier grade portfolio. Did you have any sort of design considerations that you took into account when you were selecting a, a hardware vendor, a gateway vendor for your network? Yeah, I think so importantly, thinking about a, uh, a carrier grade network uh, in, in infrastructure, you know, uh, somebody that had it's almost as much about the business partnership as it is the technical requirements and, and Tiktelic having um, <clears throat> the history, the scalability to be able to, to, to go with us into uh, this, especially as we were building out during a time where global supply chain issues were enormously constrained. And um, OK, I won't lie and say Tiktelic hit every single one of your deliverables, <laughs> um, but it was a time when nobody was hitting any of their deliverables. And, and so, uh, you know, that, that the company was committed uh, to us and the business partnership was really strong meant a lot to us. Uh, from a from a technical perspective, you know, in particular, uh, uh, we really wanted to build out a 64 channel network in the United States. Um, we for a variety of reasons. Um, the 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 first two, the first 16 channels of Laura Wan may eventually uh, see congestion. We don't see it yet, but we're you know wanted to be able to future future proof in that, that we can move people to the upper bands um, for sure. Being able to operate um, at full, uh, full watt power, um, which FCC requires you have at least 50 channels available for that. You know, some of those requirements that allow us to, to do that. And then, you know, the, the performance testing on the Tectelic gateway was fantastic uh, relative to, to the competition as well. So um, I think those were um, yeah, typically what we put in design factor, obviously, you know, there's some table stakes there as well in terms of environmental uh, conditions, being able to handle extreme temperatures, being able to, to function uh, really anywhere we're deploying from, you know, upper Midwest down into, uh, into Texas and Arizona, where we had both ends of the heat spectrum. 
Absolutely. The U.S. is a big place and you can get very, very different environmental conditions on the, on the exact same day in, in different places. So, so that's great. Um, Gabe, at Tectelic, we have a few different vertical markets that we focus on in our IoT business. These are, you know, from real estate management or smart buildings, um, industrial IoT, asset tracking, even digital health. But in your opinion, with so many IoT vertical markets and use cases where, where LoRaWAN is currently being utilized, uh, which vertical markets do you think will see the most IoT adoption, LoRaWAN adoption in the next, say, five, 10 years? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, sometimes uh, analysts come up with these ideas and, and you think it's going one way and then the, the market takes you some uh, completely different direction. I, I think on LoRaWAN, though, in particular, uh, you know, there's some there's enough history in terms of adoption for us to be able to look at some mar vertical markets and say these are ones that are going to really, um, really hit, hit huge volumes over the next few years. And I think, you know, you mentioned a couple of them. Um, commercial real estate, historically not really a, a huge IoT uh, early adopter uh, in, in there, but I think there's a few things that are driving that now. Um, the the growing number of enterprises with ESG goals, looking at how they're managing HVAC, lighting controls, uh, electricity, things like that, is is driving it. The um, the return to work health uh, focus, and you know, Tectelic makes a fantastic CO two monitor, for for example, that uh, for monitoring indoor air quality. I think is uh, we're starting to see adoption of. And then just the basic usage of commercial real estate, of how uh, how many people are in an office at any one time and, and what that does. I have this story I tell of a time uh, in my career where we've gone through, just gone through a, a large merger, a very large merger, and um, somebody physically walked around the office every hour checking off how many people were in cubicles um, so we could do real estate planning off of that. That was your uh, that was your Laura Wan sensor walking around <laughs> there in the office, and you know we ended up giving up a million square feet of real estate after that that merger. And I think you know there's a lot of that that's going to be going on over the next couple of years as people really settle the dust settles on this return to work stuff. You know, big big markets beyond utilities is huge, um, and I think probably the number one driver. If I look forward five years, like you said, of Laura Wan, um, just the basic because AMI. As, as one segment within the utilities is such a, just a, an enormous number of endpoints um, will drive a lot of the, the, the overall volume. But there's a, you know, a lot of infrastructure monitoring use cases for utilities as well. Um, and then I would add uh, I, uh, smart cities and, and particularly things around smart parking, lighting controllers, waste management, indoor outdoor air quality monitoring. I think those are um, places where we're seeing just a lot of interest right now. Yeah, I mean, we're kind of in the same position. We're 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 ready and equipped to support you know various different use cases as they emerge. We're excited to see to see where it's going. Um, IoT has you know so many possibilities, so many different solutions that we can that we can work on uh, making easier. That was a great example about you know someone walking around. Uh, talk, looking at how many you know cubicles are being occupied, it's just about you know making making life easier for people and and solving real world practical problems with IoT. And I know that that's something that both TechTelic and EveryNet are are very committed to. So that's great. Um, Gabe, thank you very much. Uh, those, that's sort of it for my questions. But before we wrap up, I just want to sort of give one more plug to the to the trial offer that you had mentioned a little bit earlier in the in the session here. Um, so uh, for those of you watching, EveryNet is currently running a, a limited trial offer of their network, as Gabe mentioned, allowing users to connect up to 30 devices and get a get a sneak peek of the, the true value of connecting to the world's largest low, par low power wide area network. So to learn more about that, uh, we have a QR code on the screen. You can follow the link. We'll also make sure that the link uh, to get you to that offer is in the description of this video. Um, but but that's it. So that that really wraps up our time here, Gabe. I, I, I sincerely thank you for your time. Um, 
as I've mentioned a few times, EveryNet is an outstanding partner of TechTelic, and it's always great to connect with, with someone who shares you know, a lot of the same passion, excitement, and, and goals for IoT and LoRaWAN. So really appreciate your time here today, Gabe. Yeah, Jack, thanks for having me. It's really great to, to catch up with you here, and thank you for the partnership. Great. Thank you.